Do you ever get frustrated using the attachments option with SharePoint lists? This isn't as easy to use as document libraries where you can grab a whole set of files and drag them in and it's easy to create folders and subfolders and things like that. Well, it's very common in SharePoint lists where you want to do something like track a project. And naturally, there's going to be documents associated with the project. So rather than use the attachments function with SharePoint lists, there's a nice solution where you can simply create a folder in a document library and have that connected with your SharePoint list. So that's what we're going to look at in today's video. A really easy, convenient way for you to automatically create and link a folder in your SharePoint list so that you can easily manage documents tied to that SharePoint list record. And with that, let's get SharePoint Smart. Okay, I'm just in a regular plain vanilla SharePoint team site. I just created the site. I have one list in it, which is called Projects, and I haven't done anything else to it. Now what I'm going to show, you could go ahead and do this to an existing list. You can add whichever fields you want, but I've just focused in on the basics of what we need to do to accomplish the functionality today. So in order to set this up, we're going to need to have a column to store a link to this folder that we're going to automatically create in the documents library, which is automatically created when you set up a new SharePoint team site. So I just need to add a single column. I can just click on the header and I need a hyperlink column. So I can go through here and select hyperlink. You can do this from the list settings screen as well. So that's what I want, hyperlink, and I'm going to call this documents. I'll click on the more options. It does not need to be required in add to content types. That's fine. So I'm just going to hit save. Okay, there's my column. What we're going to be doing is setting up a simple workflow, which is going to automatically create a folder in the documents library and then add the link here to the documents column. So as I mentioned, every SharePoint team site by default has a documents library and the URL it's referred to as shared documents. That's what I'm going to use for this demonstration. Of course, if you want to, you could create another library and use that instead. Either one will work just fine. So here's what we want to happen. We're going to want to have this folder automatically created every time a new record gets added to the SharePoint list. And then we also need to update the list item with a link to that folder. So let's go ahead and get into Power Automate so we can accomplish those steps. So I'm going to switch over to Power Automate and I'm going to do a new flow. So I'm going to do automated cloud flow and let's give it a name. When a new project is created, make folder. Okay, and there it is. It suggested to me when an item is created, that's our trigger. So I'm going to click create and then we'll uh, be brought out into the Power Automate canvas where I can build my flow. Okay, at this point I need to select the site address where this is. Here's my site which I just created. And then I'm interested in the event when a new item is added in the projects list. That is our trigger. I don't need to do anything with any advanced settings for this. 
So the first thing, when this is created, I need to create a folder. And so luckily, there is a flow block just for that purpose. I can just type create folder. And there it is. It's suggested as the first item, create new folder. And once again, it's going to ask me for the site address. And there it is. And then I want to make the folder in the default documents library. As I mentioned, you could use another library if you wish. And then it's asking me for the folder path. You can have, of course, nested folders and things like that. In our case, we just want to make a folder in the root directory. So this is going to be very simple. So I'm going to call the folder project. And then I'm just going to use the ID. I'm interested in the ID, ID because I know that it can't get changed. And that's important to me because naturally in a SharePoint list, the titles of projects and other fields tend to get updated and changed. And I don't want anything that could get broken later. The ID will stay set and it's guaranteed to be, guaranteed to be unique. So that's what I want to use. So I'm just going to use the ID value right after project and that will be the name of the folder. Okay, so that's gonna create our folder. Now we want to automatically populate that documents hyperlink column with a link to this folder that we just created. So in order to do that, I need to do a update item workflow and I'll just click on update item and for a third time, uh, we're gonna go ahead and select the site again. So there it is. And then I just select the SharePoint list projects. And then it's asking which item to update. Well, I just pass along the ID of the item that was created. So be careful here because you've got two IDs. Make sure you pick the one under when an item is created. Okay, and then the next thing that I want to do, um, I'm just going to simply pass along the title of what was in there when the item was created. Normally the title field by default is set required. I turn that off, but um, you can leave that required. Just make sure you pass along what was already in title. Okay, and then is the hyperlink field. Now, a special thing to know about this. Currently, there is not a simple way to set the value to hyperlink field in Flow. And what I mean by that, there are two pieces of information for a hyperlink column. One is the actual URL, uh, which of course we're interested in. The other is the label, the plain text that uh, makes it readable. And it doesn't give us a way to set those two values in here. Now, there is an advanced process you can go through which is difficult in order to go through that. And it's generally not worth our time. And in fact, we don't especially need that. We're gonna actually do something a little bit different as you'll see in a couple minutes as I get further along in this process. So for the sake of what we're doing, we're just interested in the URL itself. So what I'm gonna do is come back over to my SharePoint site and what I want in particular is the path to that shared documents library. So what I wanna do is just copy and paste that. And just paste that right in. And then recall that we use the word project um, in the beginning of the folder name. Now, you can use whatever name you want. In my case, I was dealing with a list, which is projects. Uh, you could come up with whatever name. The key thing is that you make this step match with the preceding step where you created the new folder. And then recall that we are using the ID. Um, again, be careful here. Make sure that you pick the right ID. We need to use the ID from the item that was created. 
don't make the mistake of picking the ID of the folder, then you, it's not going to work. All right, so I've got that set and I can save. That, believe it or not, should pretty much be everything that we need to do in our flow. We're actually ready to test this and we can see this in, at work. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new item in our list. Um, whoops, I'm in the wrong area. I need to go to my projects list and I'll do new, I'll say apples project and save. Okay, now we do have to wait for that flow to respond. Sometimes that can take a little bit, sometimes it's quick. Um, that can vary, uh, might be immediate, might be sometime within a minute. So we're just gonna wait, we can monitor our flow in here um, and we will eventually get our flow trigger. This is just part of using Power Automate kind of like waiting to catch the bus, so to speak. Um, but we can keep refreshing here. And once that flow has executed, we're gonna see that result listed down here. And then we can go back to our SharePoint list and do a refresh and we'll check our results. While we're waiting for that, I'm gonna mention the next part just so you know what's coming. We're gonna be applying a formatting template, a JSON formatting template to make a nice looking link so it's more user friendly. And to do that we're going to be using a free template that's available over at the SharePoint dashboards.com site and that is the button hyperlink template. So we're coming to that. If you do not have a sign up for that you can get a free sign up. It's really easy to do. Just go in there to the uh, gallery screen and you can um, click on the free sign up at the top of the page for that. All right, let's see if Power Automate has caught up yet. Not just yet. Sometimes it can take a little bit of time for these to run. Normally it wouldn't take quite this long, but um, it can vary. I think especially when you create a new flow, sometimes that adds a little bit of time as well. I'm going to do another record while I'm waiting for that one. I'm going to pause while I'm waiting for this to finish. Okay, flow was being a little bit finicky with me. It was being slow to respond, but it is working. And we'll go ahead and check our results. So if we go to the documents library, you're going to see these folders that we're creating. You can see they have generic name. So if I was browsing this, it might not mean a lot to me, but that's not going to matter because our users are going to get to these libraries from here. Now here's the link. So first of all, let's double check and make sure this works okay. So if I click on that link, it does open to the folder, which is what we intend, but we have a problem. That's not user friendly at all. We don't want to show this long URL. Um, we want something that looks nice. And now we're going to go ahead and apply a template in order to get that result. So um, as I mentioned, you can go to the SharePoint dashboard site and get a free account. And that includes 20 free templates. One of those templates is called button hyperlink. That's the one that you want to use. Uh, it's pretty easy. You just log into the tool you can pick whatever kind of icon you want on your button. Um, this is just to open a folder. Um, I'm just gonna pick one quick for the sake of time. Obviously there are loads of options here. So um, I'll just pick this one and then 
that's really all that I need to do over here. Then you click on copy template and then just follow the instructions in the pop-up. Click OK. And now I can pop over to SharePoint and let's make this documents column look much nicer. So go to column settings, format this column, advanced mode, and then just paste in the template. And we're looking better, although I still don't want to see this long URL. Lucky for you, that is a very easy fix. If you look over in the code window, it's trying to pull in the description. If you remember in the flow, there's a limitation where it wasn't going to allow us to put a friendly label into that. And that's okay. We're not going to use that. We're just going to type documents explicitly. So it's in this text content field that's at the very bottom at line 44. You can just replace that conditional statement that's in there with that text. And now things are going to look much more user friendly. Okay, so it still does the same thing. If I click on this, it's going to pop open that window for me. And now I'm free from the list item attachments functionality. Now I can drag and drop files in, in here in a batch. I can make subfolders, whatever I want. And this is all going to be automatic at this point. So let's go ahead and do one more project just to prove this is all working the way we want. So we got figs project, I'll save. And then this will trigger the workflow. So we just have to give it a little bit of time to percolate. Um, since we have Power Automate open, I can just refresh it on this page. And, um, you know, that way I'll know when it's run. Normally, this is going to be pretty quick. Um, and um, the thing that's nice about this is it's going to happen automatically every time a record gets generated in that list. So the user doesn't have to do anything, no extra steps in order to take advantage of the functionality. Okay, there's the latest run, and that means when I refresh the page over here, I'm going to see the update. So in the documents library, there's my new folder in the projects list. Here's my column, and if I click on this, it goes specifically to that folder. And it looks like we are all set. Okay, I hope you guys found that useful. If you're like me, if you've used SharePoint for a long time, you probably will agree that the attachments functionality in SharePoint lists, it's not that user-friendly. It certainly doesn't allow us the ability to do subfolders, or batch select items and drag and drop them into the interface, that type of thing. It's really not a great setup. But we use SharePoint lists all the time for tracking projects, uh, tracking approvals, and keeping up with all kinds of different processes within the organization. And it just makes sense that you want to have the ability to manage files using the part of SharePoint that already works really well, which is the library's functionality. So this lets you marry those two things together and get the both best of both worlds, so to speak. So I hope you found that useful. Um, hopefully you can follow through those steps and you can set up the same functionality in your SharePoint site. And um, the more you do it, it's going to be um, you know, easier and easier, and your users will thank you for being able to have this functionality. Thank you very much.